Welcome to Hill Talk Tuesdays with Lisa, where transformation begins as we evoke, embrace, and evolve. Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays. This is Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Well, today I'm going to be talking about something that I haven't been talking in quite a long time, and so many have been asking me about the powers of hypnosis, the powers of our subconscious mind, and actually what it is that I do. Um, I guess there is a confusion between the therapies, hypnotherapy, coaching, NLP, and so many of what we call modalities. So allow me to give you just a small uh, synopsis of um, how the mind works, what exactly it is that I do and what my services are and what I provide and just a tidbit about uh, the powers of your own uh, words, the way you speak, the way it is. Why did this come, come about is because I just posted something on Instagram and hello how are you i don't know who you were but i see a viewer if you have any questions at any time by all means you can put it in the chat let's have a conversation about this the powers of your uh thoughts your ideas your desires and of course the words that you speak you know every thought creates an image and when we think about the image it becomes our a dominant thought and that image plus the thought and the way we feel incorporated with each other is what we get attracted to or attract within and what I put on Instagram it was just on a whim that's how I was feeling and you can go to my Instagram Lisa Bubari on Instagram and see my post and you can uh, make a comment about it and everything but one of the things was i got lots of calls and texts texts and messages of how much uh it was funny it was to the point that it is true and actually two people said i am surprised the way you spoke and what you said because i usually most of the time 90 5% of the time, do not use words that are profanity or disempowering or anything like that, other than myself, because I'm highly critical of myself and think I have not accomplished a lot. And yet I flip it, I've learned how to flip it to see the bright side and the power within it because I teach and I speak the powers of the word so the mind is 95% if not more your subconscious mind so just envision that this I've shared that our mind is like a video camera and when you focus a camera to whatever it is that you want to see right it is looking it is learning which is capturing and it is listening the entire time and it doesn't even have to be a camera it can be your phone the moment you want to video something what is what is the phone doing the part of the camera looks it is looking while you push record it starts recording everything but what is it recording everything that is in sight even the sounds and that you're not listening to or paying attention but it's in the background okay so your mind is incorporating and that's why children's mind is like that it's like a sponge we're just incorporating everything it's being put in right and just like a sponge if we squeeze it what happens we squeeze whatever it is if it's juice or whatever the water that comes out so when we come to a calmness 
and tap into the subconscious because everything recorded has to be recording somewhere, which is that little chip in here, which is the little chip, which is the biggest aspect of your mind, the subconscious. From day one until now, every pattern, every behavior, every thought, idea, concept, image, shape, everything has been incorporated in there. So when we go into our, let's say, pictures, right? When you go into the pictures and you scroll all the way to the back, and it can be 10 pictures back, a thousand pictures, some people have 2000 pictures in their phone. You can go back into a time and a place when you were three years old, five years old, 10 years old, 17, it doesn't matter. So when you come to a clinical hypnotherapist, such as me, first and foremost, I am not a licensed, no hypnotherapist is licensed. If you see the word licensed, hypnotherapists are not licensed because there is no licensing for hypnotherapy. So a hypnotherapist's position is to help you, guide you, so that you can tap from your conscious mind into the subconscious mind faster than just doing a dialogue of talk, okay? This is what we learn. We take you from your conscious mind, bypass the critical factor of your analyzing, judging, criticizing, reasoning part to go into the subconscious, which is the folder that you have recorded everything into your brain, into your mind. So we can pull in habits, behaviors, patterns that has been already incorporated there for the longest time, okay? In order for us to shift a negative habit or any habit or pattern or behavior that no longer suits you that you want to make a change. And if you are stuck in a place in time, or if you are stuck in a rut, if you are stuck with anxiety, with fears, fears are learned, we are not born with fears. So if there is anything that you need to change to feel better, even if it is pain to feel better, if you have gained weight, you want to drop the weight and feel better, right? So it's going from the pain factor to the gain to feel better and healthier and happier. We pull into that level and that's in your subconscious. Once you shift that and uh, shift the pattern that it's, there is an emotional connection to it, then you feel better. So it is saying, I don't like that picture. You take that picture, you edit it, you put either a film on it, you shift it, you put a music to it, and then you resave it. That's exactly what we do with certain habits, behaviors, and patterns. Resave it, and the first one you either put it in archive or you just save it over there and you start functioning or using the new picture, the new video, the new pattern, the new story. Okay? That's what we do. When someone is a smoker, we are not born smokers. We learn to smoke. And that learning, if it is feeling good, it becomes a we do it again and again until it becomes a habit. When you continue a habit, it becomes a new routine. The routine continued becomes a part of your daily behavior until you turn around and say, I can't smoke anymore. I'm suffocating or you're having anxiety or heart problems. Uh, you can't breathe well, you can't sleep well, and you need to stop or the lungs are affected. That's when someone says, I have to stop smoking, or they have a new baby, they don't want to smoke near the baby. 
they have to have a surgery, they no longer have to smoke. Or they, somebody says, I can't go exercising and smoke at the same time. It's like you can't be sad and happy at the same time. Okay? It's too conflicting. One overpowers the other one. The one that trumps a better emotion is the one that you want. So many of us lose our power because we either get stuck in a rut or we, I was giving this example today, a rabbit that goes into the rabbit hole, they go through there until they come out from the other side and they dig and they come out. This rabbit does not know if, it, if they have a gray coat or a white coat. They just know they're a rabbit and this is what I do and I know how to do this. I dig and I go through this rabbit hole until they find where they're coming out from. Just like gophers, they don't know any difference. It's their instinctive way of doing it. So we as humans get to do things and get to have a new habit or something like that. Either we like something and we see it and we say, I want to incorporate that, or we get to have patterns because we grew up seeing those patterns or hearing them or believing in it until you say this belief system, which is this a BS that was somebody else's no longer works for me and I'm ready. I'm ready to become better. I'm ready to become healthier. I'm ready to stand up for myself and say, this is, this is my desire. This is where I want to be. Now, there are words that are powerful, empowering, and there are words. I took a picture of just something and there are words. Of course, I can't find it, right? Okay. When you say the word want, it's like, I want it because of what? Because I don't have it. I'm lacking. I want to find a man. I want to uh, have this. That means I do not have it because I'm lacking this. That's why I want it. So start thinking and write down how often you use those words. Should. When you use the word should, it's like, should I? Right? If I say, should I? That means I'm asking. Who am I asking? Someone else. Should I do this? That means I'm not the decision maker. I'm waiting for you to make the decision. And when you make that decision for me, if it doesn't work, I'm going to turn around and blame you until I'm ready to take responsibility and say, I will, I can, I am, and this is my decision, right? When we say need, there's a part of us that says, I need this. It's like a dire need. So what would be more empowering? I'm ready. I can. When we talk about commitment, the word commitment comes from commit. And why is it that so many people have this issue with commitment? Because in the old days, it was commitment was to be combined. And that's why the big C or the commitment, it's so difficult with some some. And they think that if I commit, that means I feel confined to this box, to this relationship. So the subconscious mind, which is the decision maker, 
because it doesn't have feelings feels confined when there is the com commitment work to be of service in the old ways it was you only are in service which is the religious ways is to be enslaved or to commit to this organization so that's where acts of service used to come from now execution when you want to execute something it was to put to death it's like execution instead of i am ready to complete this and it's such a beautiful way of this is what i can do and i am ready to complete it to make it happen now making it happen it's saying i am doing something about this you know i play a game and it's called wudoku uh it's like um is that a wudoku yeah wudoku so it's a word game but it's in boxes and first of all it teaches how I can compartmentalize things, how I can make decisions to put like a puzzle together. And it's got degree. It gets harder and harder and harder and harder, right? Each step I complete, I compete with myself and it challenges me. Here's what I'm trying to, not trying, I'm going to say, I am sharing with you is when I'm playing Wudoku, if I look at uh, the numbers of what my numbers are and how I'm competing, I lose track and I get lost. But when I am only concentrated on completing the task and no matter how hard it is, I complete it in, in, in the minuscule of a time and it's done and it says job job done so when the focus is on completing a task instead of seeing how i am measuring we get things done so much better so the subconscious mind when we shift it when you shift the physical aspect of it and put the emotions aside and you become so focused on what it is that you desire and you want to complete to become a non-smoker this is the weight that i want to be right not how much i want to lose oh, how sad i want to lose because whatever i lose i want it back it's a loss and we don't want to feel the loss again want is i'm lacking so if i'm lacking what i don't want it's a double negative two minus two is a minus four it's not a positive number so all this means what i guide you to tap within your subconscious mind so you can establish something far greater than where you are when a client has come here and on our second session i help him zone in to what he desires what his goal is it's about him not the girlfriend not the past not the patterns but recognizing that's where we evoke and I want you to do the same thing think back the words that you use every single day is it double negative hi Sedajan how are you it's so good to have you here with us is it <sighs> do you use words that it's in this empowering and when you feel stuck you can't see the beauty you can't see the greatness 
when you feel vulnerable and when someone has literally chipped away your confidence, chipped away your strength. And when a client comes and says, Lisa, I feel lost. I'm angry. I feel as if I don't know what's tomorrow bringing me because I don't know where I'm going anymore. That's why I said this, because we get so stuck in here, we don't see all the love around us. We don't see the flowers around us. We don't see the beauty around us, the beauty within yourself, the strength within you, the power within you. Because if you say, I want to go back to who I was, that means you were so good. Now, what was happening in your life that you felt so great? And if it was so great, what chipped away at you? At you, right? It's only the front. It's only chipping your confidence, not who you are. So what I do is we unravel the patterns within the subconscious and it can be a week ago, a month ago, a few years ago. It doesn't matter. It's not about you're not good enough. It's seeing the pattern that you feel weak at. Only temporarily. Temporarily. So that you can stand up again. You can be happy with you again. So you turn around and say, oh, I feel good about me again. And when that again, we instill that part of you. So you say, this I want to build on. I am building on this over and over. And the next time, when I say I want, I remember, ah, what is it that I'm lacking at this moment? And I bring back this powerhouse that I am. And I start going up to feeling better, happier, stronger, confident, and even boosting. So with self-pride, not pride about watch me, but I feel good about myself. Anything we want to do in life, anything you want to accomplish in your life, from buying a car to a job to hiking, to shifting a pattern, it all comes from knowing that you feel good about who you are and having your inner self pride. And once you have that, everything is possible. You know, Les Brown says, when you see the word impossible separated, it becomes I, it becomes M, and it becomes possible. That means I am possible. I can create. I can do just about anything. And there are nothing, nothing is impossible. Because the words I am, whatever you put after that, is what you can create. So today I was looking at uh, my own notebook. I'm a writer. I write things and I like to complete things when I write. Um, where is it? <laughs> now today, as I am about to share something, it's not here, right? But it's always here because when we want to create something, constantly writing, writing. When you write it, you put it down. It's when you write it, you put it 
down and then you read it, right? And when you read what you write, that's when you come to incorporate it and embed it into your mind. So everything you write, all the I am's that I write, okay? I want you to do the same thing. I am dedicating 30 minutes a day, okay, to do mindfulness. I am exercising and feeling fit every single day. I feel exhilarated every day. I am speaking on different platforms, but this is for me. So I want you to take a piece of paper and start writing your I am's. I am, I can, I feel, okay, and I desire. When you start writing those, you realize everything of I can do what? I can accomplish. I can. Right after that, those are all empowerments. When you start empowering yourself, you realize when you complete this every single day, do it for 10 minutes, just 10 minutes a day. That's it. Just 10 minutes a day. You can sit and do this. You can be in the car. You can record it. But when you write it, it's like in the old days when you used to write letters and compositions. It becomes embedded in your subconscious mind. Plus, when you hold, especially a pencil, this holding, it's a, most of us are right-handed and there's also uh, people who are epidextrix and left-handed people. It doesn't matter. When you write, there is this flow to writing. And when you're putting it, the ink, the pencil, as it writes, everything is becoming so much in sync with your thoughts. And then after you start writing it, you realize you just bypassed your critical factor. You're not analyzing, judging, criticizing. You're now in flow. That's what letters are. When we start writing letters and journals, after a few moments, we bypass the critical analyzing, reasoning, judging factor, and we get into flow. Flow means everything that is in your subconscious mind and thoughts, ideas, concepts, images, and feelings start coming to surface. In Farsi, we say, uh, that means a little bit of a drunkenness when you are in that uh, state of um, tipsiness. Your true feelings come out. That's what we're talking about. That's what being in flow is, in that zone. So you want to get into the core of what you truly desire in your life? Right, 10 minutes a day for 33 days and you will see everything that you desire becomes a reality. That's what uh, journaling is. That's what vision board is. That's what tapping into your subconscious mindfulness is. So, you know, in the old days, I come from old school in my country where I grew up. I learned how to do multiplication in writing it, repeating it day in, day out. And now when I want to do any multiplication, I say it in my, the way I learned it, Dorita Charta, oh, two times two, it's four, and then I turn it, translate it four, and I repeat it back. Or I can translate it in Armenian, I can translate it in, uh, uh, in French. So in four languages, I can translate it, the numbers into that. So how did it happen? Repetition, repetition. So if there is something in your life that has been a pattern, 
and it's been repeated from the day you were a child, especially from between zero and seven. And what you're not seeing is the unforeseen, unseen patterns. It is through hypnosis when we tap into the subconscious that you get to see. So, if there is anything that you are suffering with a pain, anguish, feel stuck in a rut, you're having panic and anxiety, or have a fear, give me a call. I pride myself in being able to provide results. Heal Within is not always about me helping you heal. It's me guiding you to heal within yourself. That's today's message. There's no more reason to be in pain or to feel anxious and sad and angry. Isn't it time to feel better and know you matter? Give me a call. Let's have a conversation. If you like this message, by all means, share it. And I thank you for your testimonials. And I thank so many of you for the referrals and trusting in me. Because the best referral is a testimonial. It's a best testimonial is a referral. Both of them, they go hand in hand. And I thank you for this. And until next week, God bless you and may the universal light surround you always. See you next week. Bye-bye. And if you like this, share it, subscribe, and go to YouTube and you'll see the rest of all my podcasts.